Now, this is a question I put on my Twitter. Again, at JD Pakel, contribute to the conversation there. Do segments like this all the time. And I posed the question, what is the next college football story that you want to see made into a Netflix documentary? Now, Netflix kills the game in terms of documentaries. I mean, Nick Brake, movie buff, is going to join us here in just a few minutes. I'm excited to see what he thinks about the documentary game and Netflix. But I mean, the Manti Teo documentary was phenomenal. Uh, the, I believe there was the USC documentary on, on Netflix not too long ago. And that was, I think, by ESPN. But you hear what I'm saying. What's the next college football documentary by Netflix or ending up on Netflix? Got a lot of great responses. Got a lot of y'all talking about the 2008 Florida Gators. I think we all agree that would be extremely fascinating. Had a lot of y'all talking about future storylines that would happen. A lot of the Nebraska faithful saying the rise of Nebraska under Matt Rule. I'm here for it. I had a lot of y'all saying 2014 Ohio State. That in itself, I would watch, would pay my hard-earned money to go watch that. I got a couple of titles and storylines that I want to throw at y'all, though. So these are the documentaries and the titles that they would have and the stories that I want to see told. So the first one is... Deal or no deal, the Jaden Rashada story. Think about this. If we got to sit down with Jaden Rashada and his camp and his family and the different Gator collectives and, heck, even Arizona State, just peel back the curtain entirely and sit down and just say, hey, what happened? $13 million for a high school senior quarterback in the early phases of NIL. How did we get here? How did this become a reality? And then ending up signing the contract doesn't go through. You're telling me you want to be glued to your TV for that? I'd probably just duct tape the windows, sit on my couch for the next week and just unpack that documentary and pick it apart. Like that is a story that I think needs to be told, if not just for the entertainment value, because of the, the cautionary tale, I think it's going to be for a lot of us going forward in the NIL space. Teams, collectives, recruits, agents alike. This is a story that was the first public snafu, if you will, when it comes to the dangers of NIL and flying too close to the sun. Again, I don't fault Jaden Rashada. I don't fault Florida. A lot of adults in those rooms that made poor decisions. And ultimately, a contract was signed and not kept. But peeling back the curtain on that and getting deal or no deal, the Jaden Rashada story to Netflix here very soon, I think we need to have that story told at some point in the near future. Need to have that story told. Really quickly, though, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, we don't really do documentaries here, but this whole channel's a movie. We'd love to have you a part of it. College football community that y'all have allowed us to cultivate. Again, would love to have you a part of what we're building here. Also, follow me on the social channels, at JD Pakel on Twitter, as well as on Instagram. We post questions like this. I want to hear from y'all. I want to have the people involved in the show as much as possible because we are the people's program. I'll leave it at that. How about this one? The walk on just chronicling Stetson Bennett. And it opens like this. The trailer goes, it's, it's some coach's voice. I don't know exactly who it is yet, but it starts with the quote. You'll never play here, son. Maybe it's Southern. Maybe it's not. I don't know, but that's what Stetson Bennett was told at Georgia more or less. Hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate you being Baker Mayfield on the scout team when we got ready for the Rose Bowl. We appreciate your willingness to show up and be a part of this program. But Stetson, man, you're not going to play here. You're not going to play here. And so he walks on, eventually walks off, goes to a JC, comes back to Georgia on scholarship, has JT Daniels, the five-star in front of him. What does Stetson Bennett do? Oh, just ends up winning the job eventually during the season. Brings Georgia their first national title in what seems like forever. And that could have been the end of the movie right there, right? Could have been Stetson Bennett rides off into the sunset. Thanks so much, Georgia. We appreciate you. Decides to come back. And Georgia fans were upset about it. Georgia fans were upset about their national title winning quarterback coming back. Now, I don't want to say the entire fan base. I just want to make sure that's clear. A segment... A fraction of the Georgia fan base was not excited about him coming back for another season. And what did he do? Just won, just won a second national title. Just ran it back. So the Stetson Bennett story, again, walk-on, the walk-on, 
I think the entertainment value would sell itself. And I also would just love to sit down with Stetson Bennett and hear in depth some of the, the stories that went on behind closed doors. Some of the stories with him and coaches, stories with him and teammates. What was that quarterback meeting room like? What was it like coming back to Georgia a second time? That's a story that needs to be told. Now, you know, the stuff that comes after the credits with what his NFL career ends up being like, I'm sure that'll be a nice add-on, but his college career alone, I believe, very much so deserves a documentary. Here's another one. Life in the fast lane. I'm t- these, these titles are just, I don't know, Nick, maybe we need to get into script writing or something like that. Life in the fast lane, it's about Lane Kiffin. Here's Lane Kiffin's timeline in terms of what his life has been like as a coach. At 31 years old, became the youngest NFL head coach of the Oakland Raiders. What could go wrong? Hey, kid, here's an NFL franchise. Go crazy. Ends up getting fired from there. Leaves for Tennessee. And, I mean, Tennessee in itself could have its own movie. He leaves there after one year. And I kid you not, folks, people were rioting. People were starting small fires when Lane Kiffin left after one year. After a 7-6 and six season. It wasn't like he won the national title. Left after a 7-win season, people were upset. He leaves for USC. Gets the USC job, and it's kind of an up and down year or up and down career there, rather up and down time there. Gets fired on the tarmac. Think about that. Think about showing up to work. Rather, think about showing up on a business trip, and you're on the the plane to go home, or you're about to get in the car to go home, and your boss calls you off the plane, calls you off the bus, and says, "Hey, you know what? Uh, you're you're fired." USC went back to Los Angeles. Lane Kiffin's bags were still on the plane. You can't make this stuff up. We need a documentary about it. From there, gets the Alabama offensive coordinator job. College football rehabilitation. Gets to Bama. Gets with Nick Saban. And Nick Saban, a lot of people are saying, what are you doing bringing this guy in here? Are we serious, Nick Saban? All he does, revamp the entire Alabama offense. Goes from college football pariah to eventually getting to be a a head coach at FAU. Has success at FAU. And now, guess what? He is an SEC head coach known as the Portal King. And is having some pretty decent success at Ole Miss. So this story isn't even over. But life in the fast lane, the Lane Kiffin documentary, needs to be a reality here at some point soon. So I would absolutely watch that. Here's the last one. I think this is actually already being made, to my understanding. But how about Go, Johnny, Go? Johnny Menzel documentary from Kerrville, Texas. Being like a three-star recruit out of high school, was committed to Oregon, same time as Marcus Mariota, and then he actually ends up flipping to Texas A&M. Texas wouldn't even recruit him as a quarterback, like talk to him as a safety a little bit, but he was in their backyard. They didn't even recruit him. And he ends up going from an unknown talent to beating Alabama at Alabama with Cliff Kingsbury calling the offensive plays. Does the iconic catch the snap run around bobble throw a touchdown pass beating Alabama at Alabama wins the Heisman trophy to hanging out with Drake to the autograph gate like strictly the off the field stories in itself some of them have kind of come out with him being on different podcasts and I guess his statue of limitations being up with the NCAA like this is a story I think we need to have told the story about him showing up to practice inebriated and then getting on the plane and going and just having a career day against Mississippi State. Like, what are we talking about here? If you were to write a movie, not a documentary, if you were to write a movie for this, the script would be rejected because they're saying that's not realistic. Appreciate you. That's too ridiculous, though. Go, Johnny, go. The Johnny Menzel story. Need that one. I think we're going to get that one, but we need that one here very, very soon. So Netflix, the ball is now in your court. We have just thrown out four, I mean, I don't know what the awards are for documentaries, but they would win Oscars if the, uh, the movie awards hold true for documentaries. Uh, Netflix, the ball is in your court. All documentaries that we very much so need. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.